I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to talk about it. After eight years of wood by right saw setting. I know, I've never done a video on this before. Let's dive in. I've done a ton of videos on saw sharpening of all types, sizes, and shapes, uh, but I've never gone into the saw setting. And the big reason for that is I don't consider saw setting to be part of sharpening. Yes, I know sharpening and saw setting are basically in the same vein because you're making the saw actually perform well, but I do them at separate times. One of the reasons why I haven't talked about saw setting is that it's kind of a contentious argument. There are a bunch of different ways to do it, and everyone has their own preferred method and timing and style, and some people set every time they sharpen, and some people set only every six to ten times they sharpen. Uh, some people set before they sharpen, and some people set after they sharpen, and, and some people set with pliers, and some people set with hammers, and some people set with jigs, and some people set with these things, and there are just so many different ways to do it. And, and with so much going on, it's one of those subjects that really can confuse a lot of people and draw, cause a lot of problems. So today, I'm, I'm going to give you an overview about what is saw setting, but I'm also going to go into the method that I use for saw setting and, and what I'm trying to do with it. So what exactly is saw set? Almost every saw out there has set, even on table saws and band saws, they have set. And basically, that is the tips of the teeth stick out past the edges of the plate so that the tips of the teeth are wider than the plate itself. This makes it so when you're cutting, the groove you're cutting with the saw ends up being wider than the thickness of the plate. And yes, even some saws like this one are, are ground on the back so that the back here is thinner than the plate down here. And this will alleviate some of the bind. So if you're cutting a groove that's wider than the thickness of your plate, there's less chance it's going to be bending up on you. So when we look down the plate of the saw, every other tooth is sticking out a little bit farther than the others. This is really hard to show on camera, but this tooth right here is actually leaning over here to the right, whereas this next tooth is leaning to the left, and they're going to go every other. This next tooth is leaning to the right, and then the next one, and to the left. So every other tooth is leaning one way or the other. That lean is set. A saw that does not have set tends to, to bind up, and if you've ever used a flush cut saw on any thicker cut than a dowel, you'll find out that you're often running into problems because it's clamping up on it because the groove it's cutting is the same thickness as the plate. But when it actually comes to how do you get that bend in the tooth, there are thousands of ways to do it. This is a book that is just about the patents written on saw setting. And it's written by a friend of mine and it goes into great detail on all the different changes over the years in saw setting. And every one of these pages is a different patent and multiple patents on each page. It's one of those tasks that is incredibly simple. You're just making a tooth go but it can be done a thousand different ways and everyone is trying to find an easier way because it's rather boring, painful task because you've got to do every single little tooth. For the most simple basic method, I'm going to grab a piece of pine, just a scrap junk of pine, a piece of 2 by 4 and lay the plate so that it's flat down on there. The handle is off the side. And then you grab a punch or some random piece of metal and put it on the tooth you want to bend over, set it on the majority of the tooth and give it a nice tap. Then skip a tooth, go to the next one, and give it a nice tap. And really, that's all you need to do to set your saw. You can see here how there's marks in the board where each one of those teeth have bent over a little bit and pushed into the wood. As long as you're accurate with your hammer and you're always hitting with the same amount of force and it's going into the same piece of wood, you can get a relatively accurate set doing that. And it's relatively simple. But if you're off a little bit, you're going to notice that, um, yeah, one tooth sticks out a little bit farther and the other one doesn't stick out as far. And your set tends to be a bit random. The problem is if you have one tooth that's bent out and sticking over on the side, it's going to want to jam the saw because you have one tooth that's sticking out farther than all of the others. Now, you can fix that with stoning and resetting the teeth. But most of the time people don't set that way because it's it's not quite as reliable That's why different companies said hey, we should make other interesting things that will help us out This is actually a tool made by Distin. Oh with this one. I find the corresponding tooth I slot it down on there and I just give it a little tweak and Go to the next one a little tweak and go to the next one and a little tweak And I'll just keep on going everyone down the line and then I'll come over to the other side and I'll do those ones in the opposite direction the problem is you can give it a little tweak or you can give it a really big tweak or you can give it a crazy tweak and so it's not quite as reliable but this is really fast and really easy and it's less banging. But this brings us into one of the big arguments between hammer set and wrench set. 
if you hammer set, you're giving a momentary impulse to the tooth, and it bends and holds itself a little bit better. If you're wrench setting, you're putting a slow force into it. And honestly, it sounds better to do it slowly so you're kind of easing the metal, but most of the time, a hammer set tooth holds a little bit better. Some people will say you're kind of softening the steel if you're going slow or you're going fast, but I'll hear the arguments both ways. For me personally, I generally prefer a hammer set, but in all honesty, it's kind of one of those moot points that really doesn't make a huge amount of difference unless you do it all the time. Next up, you see these. These are plier setters, and they come in all different shapes and styles, and you'll see these all over the place. But they're, they're kind of interesting because it's all in one, and you can have the same amount of force in every tooth. They're incredibly reliable. Let's take a closer look at this. In here, you can see this circle piece. This is an anvil. And then back in here, you have a hammer. And when you squeeze it, it pushes the hammer into the anvil. You'll also notice that there's a bit of an angle on the anvil here. And as you rotate it, you're putting a different amount of angle in there. Then you've got this screw down below, which is actually a set that you put the plate against so that every time you're bending it the same amount. So when I bring it down on here, I can set the anvil to how much of an angle do I want to put onto it. I can set the screw down here to put a different angle onto the head. And that way, when I pull this, every time I'm bending the tooth the same amount as I go down the line. You can look down in here and see as you squeeze it, it bends it against that anvil. And that's all it needs, that little tweak. And we move over to the next one and we can do that one as well. You will find these in all different types and styles, and generally most people consider the Stanley 42X to be the gold standard, but in all reality, it just comes down to personal preference. They'll all do it fairly well. It just depends on how much grip strength. Do you like it in a pistol style, or do you want it with the handle out here? And there are different methods and different little tools and thousands of little changes that make each one different, and you may find one you like, or you may find that you really don't like it. But no matter what you do, you'll find that these are a pain. That squeezing, if you're doing it over and over again, is incredibly painful. And if you ever need to do more than one saw at a time, uh, this thing is torture. But it is very reliable. And if you want to get a good set every time, this will get it for you. And it does it really, really well. The only downside is it's a plier version, so you're putting a slow impulse into it. And most people will tell you hammer setting is a little bit better with the impact. But if you're only doing one or two saws, this is great. Now, if only there was a way to do hammer setting with the reliability of pliers. This is the classic Smith & Sons hammer setting jig. It's got a screw that goes into a dog hole, and then it's got everything else on here you'd see with the pliers. It's got a anvil, it's got the hammer that comes down, it's got this screw that you set the angle of your saw, and then it also has these stops that you can move in and out. So it has everything that the pliers have, except for it is hammer set. These are a lot of fun as they kind of just screw into a three quarter inch dog hole, and you can crank it down as far as you need until it's nice and stiff and pointing in the right direction. So with this, you adjust your anvil in and out. You adjust your fences to put the saw in the right place. You adjust this to set the angle you want. And once it's all set up, then you can set it on here, line up the tooth, give it a nice little tap, move on to the next one. And you could do this all day long without a problem. It is a little bit more dependent on how much force you put onto it, but in general, it's very reliable and works incredibly well. The only downside is these are hard to find, and when you do find them, they're expensive. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I, I kind of find it hard justifying this unless you're gonna be doing a lot of saw setting. But, wait, oh wait, what's, what's that? What's, what's this? Oh! <gasps> Bad Axe came out with one. Let's take a look at it. So when I was up at Bad Axe recently, uh, they had these out, and this one is actually an early run. It's got all the bells and whistles, plus a few upgrades that the original didn't have. So let me show you how this works. First off, we want it good and secure in the hole, and so I'm gonna find a dog hole I wanna fit it in and get it down in there. I will usually grab a wrench and crank it down in, because I want it to be tight. I'm gonna be hammering on this and I don't want it moving around. But thankfully, the hammer is actually in line with the hole, so all of your force is going right down into that screw line. Once it's locked down in, now we can start to make adjustments on it. The first one is the anvil, and you'll see this angle on the anvil. You want that angle to be about three quarters of the way down the tooth. So I can stick this in here, loosen up this head, and now I can move this anvil in and out to get it where I want it to be in relation to these stops. So what I like to do is actually loosen up that, loosen up both of the fences, 
and move some things around and get them ready to go. And once I get that line of the anvil about three quarters of the way down the tooth, I can lock in the two fences, make sure the anvil is where it's supposed to be, and lock that in as well. Now we have this angle screw down here, and this is how much set you want in your teeth. And that's a big question. If you raise it up higher, you're going to have less set in your teeth. You put it down lower, and you're going to put more set into your teeth. So how much set should you put in your teeth? And this is another big argument. Some people will say you need a lot of set, and some people say you need very little set, and it depends on the saw. In general, the smaller the tooth is, the smaller the set. If you're working with a really fine, clean dovetail saw, you want little or no set in there, like 0.05 inches, just a tiny, tiny amount. But if you're working with a 3 PPI rip saw, you're going to want a pretty heavy amount in there. You don't want the saw binding up on you, so you want some decent amount of set. But the more set you put in, the more material you're taking out. The more material you're taking out, the more work you're putting into it. So if you want less work, you put less set into it. But if you're a beginner, having more set in it gives you a little bit more leeway for turning the saw when you go off the line because you can scratch things back a little bit easier. So if you're a beginner, you might want a little bit more set. If you are someone who's more developed, then you might want a little bit less set. And so it's all kind of a big gray area. In the instructions that come with Bad Axe, it actually gives you the average that most people are going to have. It's a good guide to go by, but realize that there is no right or wrong. If you feel that the saw is binding up a little bit, you might want to add more set next time. For this saw, they're really big teeth, and it's one that often is binding up. And so I'm going to add a decent amount of set to it. So you bring it in here until the anvil is right, you lean it down until it's touching that screw underneath, and you give it a tap. You skip one, move over, push it back, give it a tap. And you just keep on going down the line until you've done all of them on one side, and you flip the saw, saw over, and you do the ones on the other side. When setting your saw, there are so many options and so many different things that can come into it and you're starting to wonder of what's right and what's wrong and what's the best method and what should I be using, what should I be looking for, what tools should I get, and really all you're doing is taking a tooth and going, Arr! and that's it. You're just bending it over a little bit. So sometimes just grabbing a piece of pine and a piece of metal and a small hammer and just going tap, 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 that might be all you need to do to get a decent set. Don't overthink it. Just jump in and have some fun. However, if you find that you are cutting along and the saw is always turning to the same side and always curving off, most of the time that means that your set is heavy on the side it's leaning towards because that side is taking off more material. It's going to cause the saw to turn. In that case, what you can do is stone the saw. Dude, you just get a sharpening plate and the side that's heavy on it, you just go, Wee! <laughs> yeah, I just stoned my saw. But really, that's all it takes. Usually two or three passes on one side. The side it's turning towards, that side has heavy teeth, so you just take off a little bit more material on it, give it another test, try it, and it's really that simple. If you want to see more on it, I've got several videos on stoning the saw. Um, now, it could also be that your plate isn't seated into the back correctly, in which case then you can flip it over and give it a good tap and knock it back down in, or or you could use your hammer and tap it down in that way, and that will actually fix the twist in the plate. But if you're looking at it and the plate is nice and straight and clean, then it's probably a problem with the set, and you might need to stone your saw. So don't let saw setting be a difficult topic to you. Just jump in, have a little bit of fun, and realize all you're doing is taking the tooth and bending it just a little bit. It doesn't need to be much, but just have a little bit of fun and enjoy the process. And if you do it wrong, then you can always bend it back and try it again, or you could stone it and fix it out. There's lots of ways to fix it, so don't worry about it too much. Just make sure you have the right amount of set for what you want to do. Experiment, try new things, and see what comes out of it. Now, let me know your questions down below, or what ways do you set the saw? There are lots of ways out there and different things that different people do, so I would love to hear your thoughts and what you do, and I always learn new things. So please let me know that down below. Oh, ooh, oh yes, putting comments down below, it really helps out the channel. Anytime you like, comment, share, subscribe, do all those magical things, you know what it is, every YouTuber says this, but honestly, you could join the group of people who put comment down below, down below, and yeah, well, thank you. Or, oh, oh, you could go even farther. These people over here, those are some of the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon. Because without patrons or members, uh, we wouldn't be here. You guys are the ones that sponsor us and keep us going. So if you'd like to help out with that, then think about becoming a patron on Patreon. I'll leave more information about that down below. I think I'll do it for now. And until next time.
Have a wonderful day. Ready, set, saw! And that's the reason why every volleyball player has one of these if they are intending to be the middle person in a volley. Bump, set, spike.